Hello everyone and welcome to my second YouTube video. This video is very different from the first one in that it is a much more laid back around the fireplace uh, conversation between three people who come from very strong Fianna Fáil backgrounds and us three are now very active members of AN2. This video is also very different from the first in that it is much longer. It is a conversation, it contains an awful lot of information and I believe that anyone that has an interest in Irish politics and who is involved in politics in Ireland or even if you don't know how politics has been pro progressing here in Ireland, I believe that you will find this video very interesting. So sit back, flick the kettle, relax and enjoy it. Good evening everyone. Here this evening we have three active members of a 2 and what we're doing is having a conversation about where we have come from politically, uh, the different backgrounds that we've had and why we are now part of a 2 So I suppose I'll just start with myself and um, well it was my grandfather that was a very active member in Fianna Fáil. Um, he was a prominent figure and he was very involved in his local common and that is because at the time Fianna Fáil represented all the values and principles that he held and so he loved the party and he did everything that he could to support and promote that party but in my opinion Fianna Fáil in the last 20 years has completely abandoned its membership and its grassroots and the values, the values, excuse me, that it once um, held and stood for. So um, I'll go to you first, Joe. Uh, this is Joe Walsh. So Joe, I'd ask you to um, tell us a little bit about your own past political experience and how it has brought you to where you are today. So Joe Walsh. Very good, thank you, Becky. Uh, politically, I've been with the Fianna Fáil uh, tradition and uh, party since for as long as I'm alive, basically, because I grew up in a house that was totally Fianna Fáil from my mother's side and my father's side. And uh, my uncles on my father's side were part of the War of Independence and Civil War and all that. And in my mother's side, again, my grandparents there, my grandfather and, and granduncles there were, were heavily involved as well in that regard. And uh, so I grew up in politics being discussed and the, the heroes of the First of the War of Independence, etc., 1916, all these things were being discussed. And I knew all the people about who were equally politically oriented. And that time, I think the bulk of Irish people were very politically oriented mm -hmm. and, uh, and were conscious parties. Now, uh, I, grew, as I grew up and became an adult, I was more and more active in the party. I moved to Cork East, uh, uh, part of Cork, uh, Cork East constituency. And there, I grew up in my involvement in the party. Uh, at common level, quorum level, I was quorum counter chairman. I grew up to being involved in the Dáil counter, Dáil counter chairman for many occasions, direct of elections for the constituency, for a couple of different general elections, mm -hmm. and uh, for local elections and that kind of level of activity. And I was deeply involved up and down to Dublin for uh, meetings in relating relation to these different uh, elections, etc. And um, heavily involved, always committed to Fianna Fáil, to its ideals, uh, I really like this idea. It, it's a, a republican ideal, uh, the uh, unity of Ireland as an ideal, uh, the, the going back to the times of when, when it was a very vibrant and, and um, energetic uh, revolutionary kind of party coming from those years and hearing about those. And I suppose over time I became a bit disenchanted that the party was no longer energetic and enthusiastic about the revolutionary time and the ideals of the United Ireland, looking after the smaller um, entities of farming and business and builders, etc., as it was always identified with. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up uh, at a time when the Fianna Fáil always boasted that there was more trade union members voted Fianna Fáil than there were trade union members voted for the Labour Party. And that was that was a true to the situation there. Yes. It was hugely widely accepted and was for the good of Ireland, you know, and uh, by and large. Um, but uh, in recent decades, that started to fade for me. And in internally, I was trying to still promote those things. Like there were different referenda came up on issues of divorce and uh, to do with um, life and so on. Way back a couple of decades ago, they began. 
and uh, I was uh, disenchanted at the f lines that we always that I always grew up at, and the reason I had loyalty to Fianna Fáil. The loyalty to Fianna Fáil uh, was huge back at that time, you know, because the party represented the views and the ideals that I had, that my parents had. You yeah, know? It, it, it was a it, strong bond. Yeah, and it didn't just represent them, it it promoted them, mm -hmm. it championed those those causes. Yeah. And it, it moved from a party, instead of championing those values, it became either silent on them or, uh, and in more recent times, proactively uh, going against those values. And I was questioning as a director of elections, why am I doing my all to get representatives elected for Fianna Fáil when they're going to go into a party which is actually voting against my beliefs. Absolutely, so, it doesn't make any sense. None no, at all. and the bonds of loyalty that I had were for those reasons. So if the party no longer represented those things that I valued uh, and that my parents before me valued, well then I felt that the bond of loyalty was no longer there. So I had no guilt about stepping back from the party, which I did initially. I didn't initially join any other party. Yes. And uh, so I had a gap. I had always been politically involved. So I got involved in all the campaigns, the various campaigns, referenda on, on, on life and marriage and such things like that. And um, it, it's, uh, they, they were my politics for a while, until Ian Two came along. Yeah. And I felt that Ian Two, and I was very impressed with Pallor and the way he was able to articulate what he was about. And the local representatives of EN2 as well, people like Finian Toomey, mm -hmm. who was a co-founder of EN2 and really very effectively represented EN2 in the whole of Cork and indeed Munster. And uh, these people influenced me and impressed me. And I, I, um, I, I looked more closely at them and I easily fell in because and to, to me it was like at a time in my life when I was retired from my work, I thought I was uh, and becoming less active in politics. This was like a, a complete renewal. Uh, yeah. Because now all the ideas that I had had uh, in my youth and in my adulthood, uh, he was a party that represented them and was a 32 county party Brilliant. You know, and was for life, for unity and economic justice. And mm. I totally supported those. And unity, I would say, the thing about unity is that, uh, which I think is not, unity can be feared. And it's like with the negotiations were going on in the north to, to uh, bring a cessation to the violence there. John Hume was saying at that time, I recall him saying it many times, you know, why should anybody fear consent? You, don't, you won't consent to it if you don't agree with it. So why should you fear consent? Yeah. And uh, likewise, I say, I think unity is being misrepresented now in border polls and questions like that. Unity is not uniformity. And that point is not being made. Yeah. And therefore, it can be a bit scary to people in an opposite side to like in the North, people of a different tradition, of a unionist tradition, etc. And they're like, so uh, I would be saying to those and others that it, it, it's not uniformity. You don't have to become and hold my values. I don't have to change and hold your values for us to be united. We can be united and respect our differences. Yeah. And we're all the richer as, as a newly a united entity because of the richnesses of, and diversity uh, of our different traditions and our different trends of thoughts etc and we're stronger together we're more certainly stronger together than we are separate and recent events uh, such as brexit has shown us that look uh, when push comes to shove in westminster they jettisoned many of the demands that the unionists in in well in northern ireland had you know if it suited Britain, they did. They jettisoned in the most. So, and likewise, the COVID um, uh, instances that we've had in, in uh, uh, that we're going through currently, you know, the need for um, cooperation and uh, and uh, um, in in areas like that is 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 great. You know, yes. so unity is not uniformity Excellent. and uh, that, that I hope we should remove any sting out of that that some people might perceive yeah and uh, thank you Joe Very yeah good. amazing going from going mm. from someone that uh, was so active in uh, Fianna yeah. Fáil to having a lull for a while and not having anybody to represent the values that you mm. upheld to now becoming so active in a new party into uh, one that represents you and the principles that you have. Um, so thank you for that, Joe. So we have PJ Feeney. Um, so PJ, I'm going to ask you the same question. Tell us a little bit about, about my past. Yeah, uh, your political past. My political past. <laughs> uh, I'm a good bit younger than Joe, so. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I like Joe. I grew up in a Fianna Fáil background uh, family, staunchly Fianna Fáil. 
Uh, I was very involved in Fianna Fáil uh, in my younger days, particularly in college. Um, uh, but then you get to a point where the leadership goes one direction and uh, the, most of the party members have a different viewpoint. And uh, you say to yourself, why bother? And I left Fianna Fáil and, uh, um, and over the last 20 years, uh, there, there was nobody uh, for me, uh, no political party. Uh, I think that even, even though, funnily enough, if you looked at the grassroots Fianna Fáil voters, uh, even in the Boston referendum, uh, uh, they would have been my way of thinking. And yes, the party leadership went their own way. Uh, Tell us about that, actually. The Fianna Fáil or dish of 2018? No, 2017. 17. It was yeah. the year before the abortion referendum. Yeah, but yeah, that they voted uh, to support uh, the pro life amendment or the eight, the, the eight amendment. But it wasn't only that, it was the vast majority of Fianna Fáil TDs came out in favour of the uh, uh, saving the amendment. Mm -hmm. And the party leadership ran rough shot over them. Mm -hmm. uh, only people who supported the removal of the article uh, to legalise abortion. Uh, were allowed on television. Uh, the spokespeople were only those in favour of removing it. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, it, it disgusted me. And uh, but uh, you know, there's a lot of good people in Fianna Fáil, and how they must be feeling when they see this, when the leadership is contrary to the wishes of the vast majority. Yeah. You know. Uh, how can a leadership do that? I think that. Um, it, it's lack of democracy within the party, like it's, it's quite clear for the last couple of decades. There was a time when the Fianna Fáil Ardesh was important. There was a time when you had 4,000 people coming up to the RDS in Dublin and they would debate motions and uh, and the, the party would be bound with them. But you know the leadership treats the, the party membership as inconvenient and, uh, and, and that's the way it's gone for the last uh, 20 years and it's not going to change now. So... Uh, so you you walked away from Fianna Fáil. Walked away from Fianna Fáil, got involved uh, mainly in independence for the last twenty years, over twenty years. But uh, then after the referendum, um, uh, you know, into was formed, and it's a party that uh, combines uh, certainly a strong republicanism with a belief in uh, social equality and uh, and uh, economic justice and. Uh, it's it's kind of a, a fit that I feel very comfortable with. And, and, and funnily enough, it's probably very reminiscent of Fianna Fáil uh, in its founding days or in the first uh, few decades where it was very socially progressive. It was mm -hmm. very uh, strongly supporting the uh, economic justice uh, uh, in a widespread... Uh, like, I find it's incredible. Fianna Fáil were supporting a government over the last four years, five years. And so few houses uh, were built. And if you look at the history of Fianna Fáil, where in the 1930s you had all the slum clearances, 1940s and 50s, all the big housing estates in Cork were built under Fianna Fáil governments. And you've, you've had you major housing crisis. You have uh, so many people can't uh, get on the housing ladder. And you had Fianna Fáil supporting the government and they did nothing about it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, if, if older Fianna Fáil members must be turning in their grave and they say things like that. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. it's, um, Definitely um, ignoring its own membership anyway and its grassroots, which is a huge concern, was mm -hmm. a huge concern to all of us. And I suppose personally, I feel like um, A2 is very much people powered and grassroots led. I know that here on at a common level, we have an awful lot of input into the direction of the party. We're involved in forming policies and um, it just gives us a sense of involvement on the ground. Um, I think you both agree with me on that one. Joe, you, do you feel confident that A2 will always be a grassroots led party? Or do you, you, like, do you think that they're could be something like what happened in the Fianna Fáil situation where a leader can take a different direction to its membership. Well, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, well, what happened in the Fianna Fáil party happened over 80 years. Mm -hmm. So let's say eight decades, and who can speak for 80 years' time? True. But certainly for the now, the now that I'm in, and for my lifetime, that's the party as I see it. Yeah. You know, that it's a, it's a bottom-up party. It's, mm -hmm. it's a grassroots party. 
and uh, it takes people's views into account, which most parties do. I, I think uh, Fianna Fáil became a very um, a totalitarian party and uh, its, it's current leadership. And there are many, many fine people within Fianna Fáil. I can, I can speak for that because I worked with them for decades. Yeah. And uh, I, that was the sad part about leading the party. I left so many wonderful people. But uh, they need to uh, see, realise with open eyes where they are and that the bonds of loyalty no longer apply because the party no longer represents uh, what those loyalties were based upon. Mm -hmm. And uh, totalitarianism, Pope John Paul II said that, you know, that when you introduce abortion, you no longer have a democracy. And he said, you have some form of, the, of totalitarian state. And here, uh, Fianna Fáil had gone ahead of the rest of the country in becoming totalitarian. Mm -hmm. Before we ever, before we actually introduced uh, abortion, it had become totalitarian and that the leadership were already ignoring the, the membership voted one way and the party uh, leadership went another. Yeah. And I have this image in my head too of during the campaign to save the eighth, uh, a picture taken on Trinity Bridge in Cork, opposite that's opposite to uh, near Morrison's Island there, opposite the School of Commerce. Okay. And of the uh, together for for yes campaign with Michael Martin and with Billy Keller, two national figures in that he was leader of Fianna Fáil and the other was a, a spokesperson for Fianna Fáil, a national spokesperson, and two great representatives of Fianna Fáil and Cork, uh, together with the likes of Simon Coveney and some other parties of the left, etc., all together. And this is where. This is where their attentions were drawn. They were, whilst they were doing that with Together for Yes, they were ignoring and failing to talk to the hundreds of common and Corley and dog counters even right around the country who were taking an opposite view. They mm. were not associating themselves or, or spending time with them, but they were with the opposite. The old story, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. And the ignoring of the 9,000 who voted for, or the 90%, uh, sorry, who voted f uh, to retain the eight in the Ordech, that, for example, and failing to take motions and vote on them in subsequent years, uh, Ordechna, uh, the two Ordechna following that one, uh, you know, shows that uh, we're in totalitarian mode. We're in post-democratic Ireland now. You know? Or was it, was it so that the leadership would see, be seen to be cool, and uh, I think and wish it kind of like moving with the times. Well, the the leadership, uh, particularly in Michal Martin, I think Michal Martin has always had a very liberal orientation personally. Okay. And that's not saying he didn't have other values. Yeah. But uh, he certainly had uh, had a liberal orientation, and I think he was he was following that liberal um, orientation uh, in with disregard for the party which he was leading and and its views. You mm -hmm. know? And uh, yeah. so uh, this is where we've arrived where we're at in, in, a, in a party. I mean, then when that legislation went to the do went to the door to legislate on the on abortion, you know, the party again there and all its most of its continuing members uh, uh, voted against things like a, a conscience clause. Why should you fear somebody exercising their conscience life? Or why should you insist that they not be facilitated? Yeah. Know? That's extraordinary totalitarianism. Yeah. Why should you refuse to give uh, medical people and others um, the right to opt out from, from this stuff? Why should you, uh, and it's proven on the ground, less than 15% of general practitioners in the country have signed up for, for, the, for uh, recommending people to, mm. the, towards abortion. Um, it's so, like what you said earlier, it's the party that, you know, the people, the values, the principles that Fianna Fáil once was seen to protect and promote, it's mm. like as if it's completely not just t yeah. turned from those values, but is doing everything that it can to it's decimate them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Absolutely. I mean, Fianna Fáil today has little or no humanity left within its functioning organisation, in my opinion. Uh, the spirit is gone. Uh, it, the party is almost dead. Um, it's behaving like a corpse. So now we are left with a Fianna Fáil zombie. And how I wish that many of the good people that are still left within the Fianna Fáil structure would choose moral integrity and service to the people of Ireland and leave, leave their party, leave their leader and come to aim to where we will represent your values. Cross the Tiber and make the jump. You're not changing. Your principles and morals and values are still the same. 
but it's how your party has changed and your party doesn't represent you anymore. PJ, have you anything to say to somebody that may be watching at home who has a strong bond, a strong loyalty bond to Fianna Fáil, um, like we once did? What would you say to them who may be feeling stuck? Uh, well, certainly as someone who would regard him de Valera as the great hero of Irish, of Irish politics, uh, uh, Fianna Fáil in that time they stood for something they stood in principles uh, they founded the Irish press because the media wouldn't give them a fair uh, a shake uh, now you have Fianna Fáil where Fianna Fáil jettons its principles to the media to curry favour with the media and the irony of course is that at the last election it didn't do them any, uh, any favours and they ended up uh, losing votes but uh, I would seriously tell people seriously think about it uh, if they have views that they're not happy with their party leadership uh, expressing, uh, there comes a time when you have to make a difference and, uh, you know... Uh, yeah. Question your loyalty. Yeah, well, it, sometimes uh, if, if uh, you know, if, if you continuously wake up and feel that the party isn't representing your view, uh, if it's doing things that you think is wrong, uh, there comes a time you have to make a decision that... Uh, to, to move basically Absolutely. I think the, yeah. the soul of Fianna Fáil has been sold many times and what we're now looking at are the corporate remains that's yeah. very strong yeah. Joe yeah well no, the, yeah. Yeah. yeah no a lot of people are mm -hmm. badly you know mm -hmm. it was the various referendum but the, the you know the way the leadership literally over overran its uh, your membership and pushing them and the the sad thing is they didn't fight back you know they they allowed to, themselves to be pushed uh like uh, you know Michael Martin like uh, you know he he was there during the boom times he was one of the people responsible for the collapse of the Irish economy and he's still around ten years later after he promised the Fianna Fáil organisation that he would bring them back from the brink and sure the boat collapsed and it still collapsed and you know thought even you know but yeah, that's question your loyalty to a decaying Fianna Fáil. And I would encourage everyone at home, if you have any questions, any queries or concerns, reach out, contact Joe Walsh, Becky Keeley, PJ Feeney, your, any of your local A2 reps. Um, we're very easy to find on Facebook and different social media platforms. We will talk to you. It'll be completely confidential and we will help you to make the move.